Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock Electronics, engineeringshock.com. This is the lower kit, the final big project. We've got some supplementary projects coming up. But this is the final big project. This is the wireless uh, wireless uh, electronic meg lock, combination lock. And I'm looking at the receiver right here. So the keypad which we're using in this, in this project uses a, a default uh, analog to digital pin. You don't need to select anything for it. The program just needs to look for inputs. But we are going to use the level shifter. Now, if you don't know what a level shifter is, it changes uh, two voltages uh, to a compatible, or sorry, it, it changes five volts in this case to three volts and three volts into five volts. So this is the five volt side. Say we wanted to talk to a TTL chip or uh, Arduino, even though Arduino was uh, three volt compatible too, uh, we can change it uh, to five volts. We can leave it and we have access to all of the digital I.O. that's available right here on this side. Uh, if you actually look really close to the board, I'll zoom in. From the top down to the left, we've got... Um, oh, geez, it's even hard for me to see. Sorry. 12, 13, 21, ground is GD. Uh, 22, 23, 2, and 17. So on this side... We've got the three volt signals coming from the Helltech. If we use a jumper to select, then we are able to put it through select through our level shifter, and we'll get a five volt representation here. So zero volts is zero volts, and five and three volts here is five volts here, and it's bidirectional. So if I feed, if I had this set as an input, let's just say GPIO uh, twelve right here in the upper left, and I've got this select this jumper uh, shorted. Then I can put a 5 volt signal here, it'll tra translate it to 3 volt signal to the input. So because the Helltech module is 3.3 3 volt compatible, you put a 5 volt signal on, you're going to burn the inputs. So what we need to do here, first things first, is enable our level shifter. And you'll notice uh, in the middle, EN slash DIS, enable slash disable. So I'm going to select the middle and left pin, hunky dory. And I'm going to take another one, and I believe the GPIO 23 is what we want to translate to. And this is so we can activate our relay board later. This is going to come at the, right at the end of the project video. So 23, I believe that that is third from the bottom. 23, third from the bottom. So now, because I've got GPIO 23 set as an output on my Helltech module, I've got my three-bit level shifter set here. It's going to change the three the three volt signal output on GPIO 23 to five volts over here, and that five volts will go to our relay board later on. Now you don't I don't you don't get a relay board with this project, but I'm going to show you how to hook it up and how to hook up a mag lock um, to this. You just need a mag lock, a 12 volt power supply, or a power supply that's compatible with your mag lock, and a relay board. Relay boards are cheap. You can get them for a buck or two on eBay. Uh, active high or active low, it doesn't matter. Um, you just need to set the, the program accordingly. Uh, or you just, yeah. So um, first things first, let me demo the program. And then what I'll do is I will, uh, I'll hook up a mag lock to it. So this is my receiver. I'm on address three. Uh, although it doesn't really matter for this project, I might as well just do this side by side actually because I don't need to be in a different room for it. Let's have a look at the transmitter and the receiver side by side. One thing I forgot to mention is that you have to set your receiver, in this case, to address three. You can change that in the code, but the this uh, the tra the uh, the transmitter sends specifically to address three. So if you don't have it set to, the receiver set to address three, it's not going to work. So I know that again. I'm so sorry for the terrible quality of the video you can't see the display it doesn't look good at all it's just human eye it looks great it says enter combination um it's the frame rate of my camera i know i keep apologizing in any case i'll press one two three four and it, it shows the numbers access denied five six seven eight access denied uh nine zero one two Denied. I see only the only thing I see on the receiver is awaiting instruction, and it also looks very hard to read. Uh, I've got the cord in the way. I apologize. I'm going to enter in the right code: three six eight nine. You can change that code on the transmitter as you see fit. Three 
six, eight, nine. Access granted. And it says here, Maglock deactivated for five seconds. So right now, that GPIO pin connected to 23 uh, has been level shifted to five volts. So the 23 pin, pin, pin here is a five volts. Now we connect, connect our relay board. So after five seconds, the relay board will turn off. So let's go talk about the hardware. This is a single channel relay board and it's a really, really cheap one. Uh, so cheap that it's, it's, it's so, it was difficult to see the letters underneath. But typically a relay board has three connections. In this case, five volts is a power source, ground, their DC ground, and signal. So I've got S plus and minus. Signal plus minus. So signal, five volts, and ground. And so when this line goes high, five volts, it'll activate the relay. And when it's low, it'll turn the relay off. So how do I have the relay connected? I've got GP23, GPIO23, level shifted, with my level shifter enabled. That's our signal line. And down here at the bottom, we've got some connections here. We've got some power connections. We've got five volts, three volts, and then two ground, GD, GD. So I've got five volts, red, connected to the plus pin, and black, connected to the GD ground, DC ground, to the minus pin. So now when I turn this on and we get the right code, what will happen is we'll see the little LED here turn on. We'll actually hear an audible click. And how this works, if you don't know how a relay board works, is we energize a coil. When the signal line goes high, in this case high, sometimes it's low depending on what kind of transistor driver there is. But what happens is, is it, it energizes a coil through a transistor. And the coil becomes magnetized and it pulls a switch internally. Now here's the output, <coughs> also not labeled, which is just wonderful. Uh, and so the middle pin is commonly the common pin. So when the relay is off, the common pin connects to either the left or right pin. And this is not labeled here. It should be NO, CO, and NC. NO being normally open, CO being common, and NC being normally closed. So by default, let's just say that this is normally closed and this is common. Normally closed, when the relay is off, these two pins are connected internally with the relay. When the relay turns on, the common pin disconnects from the normally uh, normally closed pin and connects to the normally open pin. So relay on, these two are connected. Relay off, these two are connected. And you can test this with a multimeter. My multimeter is currently on the fritz and needs a battery and I don't have one. So what, I, but what you would typically do is set it to continuity mode or resistance mode and check the middle pin to the left pin, the middle pin to the right pin, or hopefully you have a much, uh, a more, a, a nicer relay board than this because this is the cheapest relay board I've ever come across. I just happened to find it while looking through my stuff. So it doesn't really matter. You're not going to break anything. Um, now we need to connect our mag lock to this bad boy. So what we're going to do here is this relay is just a switch. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a high power switch. So if you have a 12 volt DC wall adapter connected to a mag lock, just directly, it's always going to be on. The maglock's always going to be on. So we're going to sever one of those connections, place one in the common, one in the normally open or normally closed, and uh, because those two are connected, the circuit will be complete until we deactivate the maglock or deactivate the maglock and, tr and trigger the relay, and then it'll break the circuit and the re the the uh, maglock will open. So first things first, uh, I'm going to get a maglock and uh, an AC adapter. Got a nice big maglock here. Mag lock bracket. We've got a red wire and a black wire. Okay, so do this all at your own risk. Make sure if you're wiring anything that you shrink wrap everything. You don't want anything exposed. I got a 12 volt 2 amp adapter here. Clip this off. And now I have to expose these wires. So I gotta shear back this insulation. Now, because I'm going to disassemble this as soon as this video is done. I'm not going to uh, do anything fancy here. I'm, I should be using shrink wrap. Maybe I'll, I'll a little bit use a little bit of tape because you don't want these to short against each other. You want to be safe. What you do is you put some shrink wrap on here. You'd solder it. You put the shrink wrap, excuse me, over top of it, and then you'd heat it up, and you'd be creating new insulation. So uh, now I'm going to I'm going to leave the black wires disconnected, and I'm going to put those into my relay. So short term solution. Again, I'm ripping this apart. Uh, I've just got that taped. I've got <coughs> a mag lock connected to one pin and the negative of my 
power supply to the other. So I've got a complete circuit right now. I have double checked. I've got my multimeter to work. This is connected to this. And that means that this is NC and this is CO, common and normally closed. So when the relay is turned on, it will break the circuit. So if I plug this in right now, this will activate. So let's uh, hook it all up. So the relay is completely isolated. Or this is completely isolated from this. If I unplug the lower board, this will still be locked. It is completely locked right now. Very strong. And, uh, and so relay is doing this thing. I'm going to go transmit to it. I'll put it in three, six, eight, nine. There we go. Deactivated. Thanks for watching Project Day. Uh, stay tuned for the supplementary videos and thanks for your patronage through Kickstarter, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed these code samples and these project videos.